Premier Toke Talani has returned from the 42nd Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting that was hosted by New Zealand, positive that discussions were productive and will provide benefits for the island. There were a wide range of issues discussed by the leaders. Premier Talani says that the theme, however, converting potential into prosperity, was also in line with Niwe's desires to proceed with sustainable economic development initiatives. In regard to the economic development issues that we were talking about, they're not really different from what we've been discussing here with regard to what we need to do to help improve our economic outlook, grow our economy using tourism and using our fisheries resource other th as well as some of what I consider as being our um, sovereign assets. The numismatics is a good example of that, whereas previously we didn't receive any money for for those type of sovereign assets, now we do, uh, in fact, considerable amount of money for that. So I hope that that will help us, um, uh, enable us to, to garner or gather sufficient financial resources to, ha to help improve the pay of our people here. Um, and we're working on a plan at the present moment that hopefully we'll be able to increase public students' pay, help improve those people, particularly in the private sector, by some tax reform uh, to enable them to improve their, their pay, take home pay, pay in their pocket, disposable income, so that we can help people here enjoy a much higher standard of living, greater prosperity, as we have all tried to promise over the past uh, so many years. The forum also provided an opportunity to discuss agreements with potential investors. We haven't finalized any agreements as yet, unfortunately. There were still things that we needed to um, to work on. It was never intended that, oh, well, it was intended that would, we would sign it if everybody was in agreement. That wasn't the case, therefore, we're going to wait. I think the point about investors coming into New York is that the New York government at the present moment is looking at those investors who are rich enough to be able to afford to come and invest here. Uh, and we've got investors from Europe investors from New Zealand, from Canada, who have expressed an interest in coming here, as well as investors from China. The point I think that it has to be made is the fact that we're not looking at poor people coming. We're looking at what I consider as being investors rich enough to be able to afford to do their own thing here and contribute to the economy of the country without burdening our, our, our economy at the present or our resources at the present moment. And that really is the purpose of this whole exercise. It isn't uh, a question of agreeing or not agreeing. It's agreeing to whether we should have investors who are rich enough to come. And if uh, all parties agree to the terms, whether they're from Europe or from Canada or from US or from New Zealand or from China, then we'll sign agreements. But until that time comes, then, then we have not signed any agreements with the Chinese. Um, we have, however, signed an agreement through the joint venture for the supply of Nuna from here, through that Chinese company. Premier Talani says some of the highlights from the meeting was the presence of high-level officials from the United Nations and the European Union. So a meeting with Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the United Nations. Um, I was very pleased uh, you don't get to meet people like that um, very often. And also the President of the uh, European Union, Barossa, uh, very polite, good people. Um, as chair of the ACP group uh, meeting again this year, I was able to make statements on behalf of the Pacific. Um, and I was very pleased uh, that he, he agreed that the European Union is at the forefront of some of the work that is being done at the present moment and the finances that have been put aside for climate change issues. But in many respects, we've been stymied or stalled by what the Americans and the Chinese are agreeing or not agreeing to do. And in my statement to him at a dinner we had with uh, President Barossa, I said to him, the point is that we should start rather than wait uh, for the Americans or for the Chinese so that at least we can respond to climate change, that it's already impacting many of the people in the Pacific at the present moment, particularly those from low-lying islands like Kiribati and and Tuvalu and Tokelau and so on. And I think there was general agreement that um, that's a good way to start. They have already started to give us some money, but it's very, very small, and it's targeted to particular 
countries. They have agreed, though, that they will release more and more of those funds to enable us to respond to climate change as quickly as possible. Another development that Niwi supported was the proposal for the establishment of a Polynesian subgroup, similar to the Melanesian spearhead group that he says already exists informally. And we all agree that we should form a subgroup. It isn't different from what the other subgroups are doing at the present moment. We're not uh, putting a, a subgroup in, a, in opposition to the forum. We still believe that the forum is a premier uh, institution in the Pacific for political issues and matters. Um, we believe, though, that since the, the what is it, Melanesian Spearhead Group and the Micronesian, there is a Micronesian organization in the present moment, that it's appropriate for us also to have a grouping of Polynesians. Uh, which has been an informal grouping for many, many years that we've now just decided that perhaps it's time to formalise it. Um, the idea at the present moment is to uh, have a meeting of officials in Apia to discuss a charter that will be used for the establishment of the group and then we'll, the leaders will meet to, to ratify the charter and to agree on administrative matters where the office is going to be cited and so on. Officials are expected to meet in Samoa in November to finalise and formalise the formation of this group. The 43rd Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting will be hosted by the Cook Islands next year. The new Legislative Assembly was in session yesterday. The meeting proceeded with lengthy discussions in regards to the tabling of the new Philatelic and Numismatic Company Amendment Bill 2011 by Premier and Minister Tokitalangi. The move to take the bill into its second reading met some opposition with a motion from Commonwealth member Tongya Sanihalo to be referred back to the bill's committee. The meeting, meeting took a brief pause to seek legal advice before going into a vote for the bill. The new philatelic and numismatic company amendment bill 2011 has now been referred back to the bill's committee. Proceedings remain civil as the annual report for the Justice, Lands and Survey Department was presented by Minister Cooper Mangtungia, tabled and referred to return at the next meeting for consideration before it can be endorsed. The Chairman of the Bills Committee, Bill Woodfall, tabled the Bills Committee Terms of Reference for 2011 to 2014 and that was endorsed by the members of the Assembly. The Philatelic and Numismatic Company Budget for 2011 to 2012 has also been tabled and endorsed. Premier Tokitalangi also seized the opportunity to provide a brief summary of his attendance at the Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting in Auckland. The meeting concluded just after midday with the next Assembly meeting expected to be held on the 12th of October. Government and civil society groups have been in consultations this week to review the United Nations Development Assistance Framework Two consultants from the United Nations Development Programme and the World Health Organization are on the island to carry out the in-country consultation that will identify what newest priorities are in terms of the development and capacity plans within the overall framework. NUE is one of the 14 country uh, consultations. We will consolidate all these outcomes from the consultation. Then we'll be... Um, uh, develop the, the, the sub-regional uh, priorities. Then that will be uh, the basis for the development of uh, uh, United Nations development uh, 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 strategy uh, framework uh, uh, document. Uh, so that will can be expected to be completed by uh, 2012 and also implemented uh, start from uh, 2013. The current Pacific UN DEF has been in preparation since 2008 and will expire in 2012. To prepare for this, the UN in the Pacific is currently undertaking research and country consultations to develop the new framework for 2013 to 2017. Yesterday we had a very good discussion with a wide range of uh, representations, that including the government agencies, the NGOs, the civil societies, um, they come out with quite a focused uh, uh, conclusion. So that means the, the comprehensive uh, and uh, uh, inclusive 
and sustainable economic development. That's the, the top priority. And also, the people are really want to have a balanced development. That's economic development, uh, at the same time, is uh, balanced with uh, social and uh, uh, cultural development. Try to maintain the new age uh, uh, culture, their, their um, um, social benefits and welfare. Dr. Yang Baoping says that the benefits are twofold for these consultations to coordinate the whole UN system working in the Pacific to get coherent focused support to countries and to better align with government priorities and that Niue has made good progress. Quite good uh, progress made with the uh, government leadership and uh, of course supported by uh, different uh, partner agencies including the UN. I think uh, New A has made uh, quite good progress in achieving the, uh, this uh, mid medium term strategic uh, MDG medium term strategic uh, objectives that uh, include eight very comprehensive uh, uh, obje development objectives. New A has already achieved or uh, on good track to achieve that uh, objectives by the end of 2015 as scheduled. The expectation is that the overall framework will be completed in time for implementation in 2013 as a five-year st strategic program framework for the UN system. The local court was in session on Tuesday as the police department presented a total of 17 criminal cases before the Commissioner and Justices of the Peace. A majority of the charges were related to the failure to renew annual licenses for vehicles as well as failing to renew driver's licenses. One case was adjourned to the next proceeding as the individual was not present on the island. The remaining five cases were all convicted and fined with a set time to make payment in a set period of time. The use of motor vehicles without annual license, convicted and fined to pay $50 in two weeks. There were two cases of driving with excess breath alcohol. In one case, the individual was found guilty and fined $200 and disqualified from driving for three months, whilst the other individual was convicted and fined $100 to be paid in three months and also disqualified from driving for three months. One charge of driving in a reckless and negligent manner resulted in a request for the issue of a warrant of arrest at the next court sitting as the defendant was not present and no plea was given. This was granted by leave. Two cases of assault were adjourned until next month as police witnesses are currently overseas. One of the major cases saw an individual facing three charges, one for theft, one for unlawful entry and one for an unlicensed person not to drive. This was adjourned on the request from the police department to be brought forward before the Niue High Court judge in November, as well as an installation of a restitution of $3,000. One case of negligent driving was also discharged without conviction, whilst one charge was adjourned to the next court case for one person facing charges of being a pillion passenger on a motorcycle, not wearing a safety helmet. The next local court sitting is on the 11th of October. Women's cricket on the island is now midway competition with the second round of games held last Saturday. All teams turned up battling the blistering heat. Zone 4 is in the lead winning both of their games and are on top of the table with 10 points. Zone 4 consists of players from the southwestern coastal villages of Alofi South to Amasali who have blitzed their opposition from the north, winning convincingly, this time beating their rivals from Zone 2. For Zones 1 and 3, who lost their first games, they went on to play hoping for a win, but it was Zone 3 who came away with the win this time round. So as it stands, Zone 4 are on the top with 10 points, Zone 2 and 3 both have one win and one loss with 6 points, and Zone 1 has 2 points. According to the Kirikiki committee, depending on the outcomes of the last round of games, the champion team will bat against a combination team made up of players from the remaining three zones on the 1st of October. It is also expected that a national team will be formed to play a visiting women's Kirikiki squad from New Zealand, expected to arrive during constitution for a game on the 17th of October. 
This weekend, however, Zones 1 and 2 will play their final game and Zone 3 and 4 will battle it out next week. That concludes our BCN News Bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you enjoy your weekend ahead, especially to those teams who will be competing. All the best.